Oh, hey guys, welcome back. So today's another plant trim video and I'm gonna be honest guys, I took a little break, like I needed like me time. And so I'm kind of behind when it comes to plant chores. So there's a lot to do. Let's start off with this Thai constellation. This one has been propagating in water. I think initially I put this one in Lekka and then I think it might have fell out. So I just thought I would put it in this vase and you know, try it out in here. So the roots are great. I think I showed this once before, but I'm basically gonna put it in this deli container in moss. But yeah, guys, let's look at the roots. I haven't seen them in like two weeks, but let's see. Oh, look, there's this new one. Okay, 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 okay. What? Okay, this is amazing guys so if y'all remember she only had this root i said in that video i was like oh i feel like this one's gonna go because look look how close i chopped to this aerial root but she didn't rot she's pushed out all these you know beautiful fresh roots and then <laughs> this new root right here okay this is great i've said this before i really prefer when there's two root systems and yeah that's so exciting I cut off the white part because she was just brown, so she's just a half leaf, but then the newest leaf is just stunning, guys. Okay, we're starting out this video on like a positive start. Again, I'm putting it in this container. So just taking some sphagnum moss, putting it in some just filling, probably about that much. Taking, oh, I'm gonna break some of these roots just because like, look, like she's a bit wide compared to Okay, okay, we did it. I was like, are you gonna fit? <laughs> so at this stage, because she has some roots, I am going to use my nutrient solution. I'm just taking some clear tape, taping it to this side so it doesn't fall over, and some nutrient solution. So I'm just putting like a little bit down here. The moss was already wet, so the root system is up here. And because she was water propagated, these roots still need to be kept pretty wet. And so I'm gonna keep her where she is. Right now she's just facing my west facing window. So not getting a ton of light just cause it's winter. And yeah, guys, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Um, I got a question about these sachets. So um, they're beneficial bugs. In this sachet, it's the Californicus beneficial and it's used as a preventative for spider mites. So they're basically on all my plants um, just in case, you know, I have another like situation. Yeah, I guess I'll just put her back. Okay, so sticking to the Monstera family, remember my Ed and Sony eyes that were wet sticks. I took the lid off. It's been off for a few weeks now. Pretty good, you know, considering the leaves are just white. Uh, there's one here that's browning, but that's about it. So because I plan to sell these, I am going to put them in these five ounce cups. I got these from Amazon in sphagnum moss. And what a journey, guys, because you all know that these are just sticks. Um, these are only half the sticks. The other ones are a bit slower. And you all know my favorite one is in moss currently as well. You'll find that when you have smaller containers, they dry out really fast. And I mean, I haven't looked at the roots in a while. There's a lot of algae, so I can't really tell, but we'll just look together. Okay, the biggest one here only it still only has one root but you can see how like amazing that end is wow she's so cute guys okay i'm just gonna pop her in okay oh so cute so she's about halfway down you can see the root right there and just adding a little bit of nutrient solution okay so that's one i don't know how i feel about this one because this one's just white this is the one that was you know turning brown do you know what we're gonna do it anyways we're gonna see what happens it looks like the new leaf is gonna be totally white wow this looks <laughs> really sad, but anyhow, that's her. Just some nutrient solution as well. Okay, who's next? Okay, you're a little cutie. So there's a trend that there's generally just one root, but looking closer at the tip, it is a healthy root. And I wanna show you guys, cause I'm just noticing this now, but she only has one root from that wet stick propagation. You can see a new root right over there. Future Kevin Zoom in. Look at that beautiful, healthy root. So I'm also gonna submerge that in the moss. Okay, that's her. 
so some green over there you can see a little bit of green over there with the new leaf even though she's predominantly uh cream this one's wild okay see this one i really want to save this one because look at how balanced this leaf is but literally no roots plants are amazing guys like how are you living okay i'm gonna hope like the last one i showed you i'm hoping there's gonna be an adventitious root growing from here and it seems that this one doesn't want to root but we're still gonna try you know obviously something is going on because this leaf is here <laughs> some moss might keep this one a little more packed and wet She looks really sad. Yeah, I like packed her a little bit more. And some nutrients. In this case, a lot of people say don't use nutrient solution just because it doesn't even have a root system yet. So it's pointless. Um, but anyhow, we did it. <laughs> Number three. Okay, this is a good root. Look at the end, guys. Completely cream, but the newest leaf does have a bit of green. So that's good. Okay, guys, here she is. This one, I was like, oh, see, and she hasn't really grown that much. Okay, look how cute. Are you kidding? I think that green stripe is working overtime. Man, she only has this small, tiny, tiny, tiny root. Wow, okay. Oh my god, this one is adorable. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, I'm really hoping it survives because you saw that tiny root. Okay, I'm gonna try not to change anything. Like I'm gonna keep these where they were under grow light. They're not super close. They're maybe like, I don't even know. It's past the camera. So my hand is like past the camera. <laughs> I would still say like medium to bright and direct, so 500 to about a thousand foot candles. Okay guys, really exciting. A look, again, baby anthuriums. <laughs> They're doing fine. I, do you know what? I've kept them a little dry to be honest, but again, pond is amazing. It really holds on to so much moisture, even though there's no reservoir. Uh, you know, just grabbing the gray ghost. I think I might repot these in moss as well. Uh, I might wait a little bit, but. That's one, she feels amazing. Number two feels great. And number three, which I'm very happy with, doing a lot better. So those are the ghosts. Okay, and big deal, Enthium Crystalina Magnificum crossed with Luxurians. It's a new leaf. So exciting. Oh, this is everything, Magnificum Luxurians. What is going on here? Am I gonna repot it now? I think I'm gonna repot it now. The roots are here, but are you kidding? Okay, let me look at it. I'm like curious to see if this will get any darker because who knows, like it is a beautiful green, dark green. And then the Anthurium, Crystallinum crossed with Magnificum. Man, oh man. Yeah, the leaves are hardened off. This one too, like you can see there is a new root coming on the other side as well. And there is a new leaf. There, future Kevin zoom in. Look at that. Look at this, guys. I can't get over this. I can't wait for these to grow up. But it's time, guys. I can see the roots. They're really big and kind of at the bottom. Ooh, look, <laughs> there's one right there. This one doesn't have one. Okay, okay, which pot? Okay, I think I've decided that I'm gonna do these square self-watering pots. Again, you could get these on Amazon. So I'm just gonna build this. So nap pot, cash po, and you just gotta put the indicator together. So I like these, you know, I've been, I've been using these for a while. There are a few reasons why I like them. First of all, they're cheap for a pack of, what is it, four? Three, generally cheaper than, you know, the Lashusa ones, for example. And regardless, this is what I find in my opinion, regardless what brand you have of self-watering pots, if they operate with this meter, there's a chance that the foam or whatever in here will get stuck. So I like these because you can just take this out. If something gets stuck, you can just lift this and assess lift the net pot, assess. And so yeah, I like these. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay. 
So just a comparison, it is a substantial up pot because people have different opinions about up potting stuff. I've said famously in the past that you don't necessarily need to repot. Like for example, this plant is fine in the small pot. Um, I just know how anthurium roots get. They get really, really big. And specifically because the root system is really big and she's grown qu quite a bit, she gets really thirsty. So I've been noticing with these anthuriums that because they're growing a big root system, the reservoir dries out a lot. And so I wanted to put them in their own self-watering pot with their own reservoir. And yeah, oh my God, I can't even take this out because the roots are just like latching on. I literally poured out all the pot and the roots are just like clinging onto the edges of the pot. <laughs> okay, you can let go now. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, look at those roots. And again, just submerge these adventitious roots right here. I might have to take out some pond. I might have to say bye to the baby leaf. I don't want to, but she's kind of in the way. <laughs> okay, bye, thank you. Maybe I should have put this on the edge, cause like, eh, I think it's fine. Uh, I still can see the adventitious roots, so just adding a bit more pawn. Ooh, look at her. She is just the cutest little thing ever. Okay, I'm using a nutrient solution. I'm gonna be so happy, guys. This is very exciting. Okay, so I'm putting her at the full mark. The full mark just means that the nutrient solution level is up to the top of these legs here. So just up to here. Okay, baby anthurium number one. Okay, I just washed, oops, this one. I'm gonna try to put the new leaf on the edge like that. Um, just because I know I'm gonna have to like push this plant really low just to cover the adventitious roots. Again, you don't have to, but it's just kind of what I prefer. Having those fresh adventitious roots really just ensures if they're submerged that they'll kind of take a hold immediately. Wow, these roots are stunning. Look at these. This is unbelievable, guys. Similar to the other one, I am going to cut, like, for example, the oldest leaf here is already going, so goodbye. And I'm probably going to cut this one, too. Mm, I changed my mind. I think I want to keep it. A lot of people might have concerns about the leaf touching the edge of the pot. Um, you can see it with this leaf as well. Here's my thinking, guys. I always think, don't worry about the right now and what the plant is dealing with right now. Just look forward into the future by submerging all these adventitious roots that haven't fully rooted yet into the pond or whatever substrate you're using. You'll have even bigger leaves. And so I know y'all are probably yelling. Okay, guys, I'm in love. Oh my gosh, okay, nutrient solution. Ooh, oh my god. Oh my god, I'm making a mess. Uh, I am gonna put them back under grow light, but a little bit farther. When she was in that um, dog bowl with the other, like the gray ghosts, these new leaves, I did face them away from the grow light just because I know mine are pretty harsh when it comes to like anthurium leaves. I'm gonna put these a bit further, still medium to bright in direct light. And yeah, how exciting, guys. Okay, I almost forgot about... <laughs> these ones so i'm gonna add more pond to the anthurium and i'm gonna use a nutrient solution Ooh, i really hope that leaf because y'all remember that the leaf looked like it rotted people might not know this but um, a lot of the components in pond when you water over it they do hang on to a lot of water and nutrients even i think that's the one advantage with uh pond so anyways whoa okay Alrighty, we're gonna do some strawberries. Oh, I feel bad. So these were in water. As you can see, the reservoir is gone. <laughs> There's a little bit left, thankfully, but I think it's time to repot these because the roots are really big. And we're gonna do moss. So this one, just green, but you can see some stripes of irrigation on the other side. And so there's a chance that they're going through that node. Lovely, lovely root system. We're gonna put this one in moss. I'm scared that this cup's gonna be too small, but maybe I'll just keep an eye on it. Okay, here she is. This small, this other small one here. Are you worth propagating? Where's the node? I'm trying to look at the node because the node I think is right under here. I could kind of feel something. But anyhow, we're still gonna do it. 
Okay. And again, green leaf, but we'll just see what it grows into because you never know. Okay, there's two more in here. I kind of want to put them in the small cup, but because this leaf is so big, it's going to fall over. Mm, I might have to use a cup. Yeah, like this one. Yeah, it's tough, guys. I've been, you know, when it comes to propagating, I'm really prioritizing strawberry shakes. I just feel like there's not enough that look good. <laughs> on the market right now. You know, obviously I won't know until a new leaf comes out of the node, but yeah, I think this one is good. Okay, cutie. Um, I just put the roots on the edge just to monitor the growth and adding some nutrient solution to the bottom. Okay, where's the node on you? Oh, it's in the petiole, which means it's gonna be variegated. Okay, this is a good one. So unlike the other one, you'll have situations where you have a single leaf, single node cutting. Sometimes the petiole will come from a node just inside this petiole here, and sometimes it'll be coming out of the other side. So this is good because the node is on this side of the stem, which produced this variegated leaf. Probably gonna have to upsize this one soon. <laughs> Okay, cute. Nutrient solution. Okay, so those were all the water props. Moving on. <laughs> these dry out so much. So these are the ones that have been in moss for a little bit. They dry out so quickly. You can see this root and the moss is like super dry. I don't know if you could hear that. Nutrient solution here. You can see a new leaf just beginning. So that is just wonderful. Number two, I love seeing this, the branching of the main root into finer roots. How wonderful. Ooh, and do you know what? There's a new leaf coming. So just adding the nutrient solution. <laughs> this is the one that I was like, I'm gonna repot her and separate her after I hydrate her and, I'm, and then I didn't and then it dried out again. <laughs> so I'm gonna try that again. Because, I mean, I said this before, but this strawberry shake is pushing out amazing variegation. You can't see it yet, but she's definitely, definitely variegated. Look at that, so amazing. Same story with these ones. Roots look great, but super crispy. So, nutrient solution. Because it's dry and being very liberal, like I'm filling it like halfway up, just because when moss is this dry, it doesn't absorb like as fast. So through time and with it being in a cup, it'll absorb it if there's some just sitting in the cup. And this little cutie, look at that new leaf. She has really, you know, done her thing. Do you know what? I'm gonna transfer this one into a cup. Honestly, love these pots and love how like there's slits for drainage, but knowing me, I really do keep the moss too dry sometimes. So having a cup kind of keeps it in longer. Ooh. Okay, I like that better. Just so I can have a little bit of a reservoir at the bottom just so it can soak up and not get too dry. Okay, cute. Alrighty guys, Miss Melna Chrysam. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, and like I'm running out of moss again. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm basically going to add an extension because this Melna Chrysam is on a foldable moss pole that is stackable. And as you can see, she's at the very top. Oh, I'm still so in love with her guys. Also, I'm a, I'm a bit scared stability wise. So I think I'm gonna add two bamboo stakes to the back just for added support. I might just put this hoop bamboo trellis on the back. How do we feel? I think I like that idea. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I just kind of shoved it in. Okay, so again, this is the large one. I'm just folding it. How wide did I do it? Again, I want this melanocrysum to get huge. Has anyone had luck with juvenile mel melanocrysums? Because I've seen ones that are slightly smaller than the one I have get pretty big, but I haven't seen anyone grow one that was like tiny to like a huge specimen. That's why I usually recommend if you want one like this, don't get a juvenile one because you will just, you'll just want to kill it. Are you the smallest? Yeah, it's the smallest. Also, thank you guys for all the support on my January favorites video. I got a lot of subscribers, so if you're new here, hello. Thank you for not leaving yet. But, but yeah, guys, I really loved filming that video. Okay, question is, do I keep the tabs? She's fine like this. Okay, I'm just gonna add moss through the top. I know y'all can't see anything. I don't know what y'all can see. Oh, do you know what? I should put beneficial nematodes just so the fungus gnats 
can't survive and thrive. So I use these, ooh, I use these beneficial nematodes, pop popper, and I'm just adding it to the moss. You do need to like spritz or water for like the first three days. I'm just really scared because y'all know when the temperatures start getting warmer, the fungus gnats come to say hello. Oh, sorry, I'm reusing this moss. There's like pieces of LECA in, in the moss. Oh my god, now she's top heavy. I just want to show you guys, because remember, I wrapped this top node when she was new. Look at these roots. I'm just gonna kind of guide them. I'll probably just wrap it a little tighter. Okay, let me put you in the sink. I'm gonna have to use... <laughs> I'm using my pump, because I can't turn the faucet head without making a mess, so... Taking this and spraying the pole. Okay. Okay, guys, I just want to give you guys an update on some flowering plants. We have one bloom on my Felnopsis mini mark. These are the cutest little flowers and she's not done. Like, look at all of these buddyanias. So yeah, I am really excited. The first bloom, orchid bloom of 2023, you know, now I can check off this one off my goals for this year. Okay guys, so this one's being a comeback and y'all know she is nice and full. Hoya CV Pachua Wallai 023, I think. So these are stunning. Look at these. So these Hoyas are known for like weeping um, nectar. Um, so, oh my God, it's going all over me. Um, there's more over here. Oh, beautiful flowers, look at that. And then this one. So there's three spots. And yeah, this one took a while because um, I don't think I mentioned it, but I dunked the entire top part of the plant in hot water. Um, just to experiment, but also there is research that show at certain temperatures, a dunk in hot water for a few seconds can kill spider mites and spider mite eggs, as well as broad mites. This was one of the plants that I just dunked in the hot water. I had it far away from my other plants and I just kept monitoring it and there wasn't any sign of spider mites. So yeah, this one is a very hardy plant because like I said, I dunked it. There were maybe like two leaves out of this whole plant that dropped and like just some leaves that had that. So, ooh, there's another situation happening there. And then that one over there is going to bloom. Ooh, so exciting. I always have to put something under this because it drips so much. Probably going to propagate this <laughs> because she's getting out of control, but what a beauty. Yeah, look at, I forgot to show you the roots. Look at the roots. Oh, it's not focusing. Look, they're out on the net pot. Ooh. Okay, guys, the queen is here. Um, I'm debating if I want to cut the older leaf, which is like really sad. I don't know. She's just kind of wide and she's really just pulling on a lot of <laughs> the plants. Anyhow, as per usual, I'm just going to water through the top. Yeah, guys, I am so interested. Um, I'm just using the pump again just because it's easier. I'm curious to see because at this point, this is kind of the only anthurium that I'm flushing through every single watering. I'm seeing if there's a difference. I mean, y'all saw that video of my anthurium regal. I kind of see the regal and the wear cranium as anthuriums that love humidity. And so, I don't know. I'm curious to see if the new leaf will have holes. Okay, I'm switching to just pouring it over. I'm thinking I might do the same with the Wattabrianum because y'all know that she's giving me so many issues. Okay, while well, that's doing its thing, I know this sounds going to be annoying. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm a little out of it. Every time I don't film for a while, at this point it's probably been, I haven't filmed for a week and a half. This is the first time I'm filming in a week and a half. Um, yeah, let's go through some questions if there's any. So Ari Rogers, thank you for all the support. I see you every time. You're amazing. I need half the talent you have growing. I swear this winter all my plants have suffered. It makes me so sad how you deal with the winter plant blues. My plants are growing slower and I know <laughs> based on like last favorites video, it doesn't show, but I find I never have luck with my plants in an aerated mix over the winter. And I don't know if it's because they're in a denser mix 
and the roots stay wet, potentially there's root death that I am not seeing when they're in an aeroid mix. I think just as long as you give them enough light, there's enough aeration around the roots. And like they have like intermediate temperature, like not super cold, not super hot, then I think they're fine. Weirdly enough, and I said this in the spring, but I find my anthuriums grow better in the winter and spring. I don't know if that's a thing, but I mean my forgetty eye. The big one's doing just fine, guys. Like no issues. This is the new leaf. She has yet to harden off and she's still growing. So this one's doing just fine. The other one is growing really slowly. So this was the newest leaf. Y'all have seen this leaf already, but like nothing. Um, whereas my other forgetty eye is pushing on new leaf. There's not even like a sign that there's going to be a new leaf. So I get the plant winter blues as well, y'all. Oh my God, I love this one. Alice <laughs> asks, did you grow plants before your boyfriend and you started living together so he knew you wanted a jungle as your plants do give a jungle vibe, which is what I want. I didn't grow plants before I met him. And actually at that point, I think we were living together for two years before I got into plants. Moved in together... I'm gonna get this wrong. 2017, I think. And then I started collecting plants in 2019. And yeah, it's a lot. You know, I feel bad sometimes. <laughs> Joanna asks, will you be repotting the metallicum into a bigger pot? I don't think so. I might do the same thing I'm doing with my queen over here. Um, or I might just put a moss. Oh, it's so big. I don't know. I've been really avoiding it because she's so big and like I don't know first of all if I put in a bigger pot where do I put it I'm just gonna assess basically on like what the newer leaves look like because if they start coming out smaller if the growth is stunted and I'm doing everything that's the same in my care for my anthuriums then at that point I'll think about it but just as long as she's giving me a beautiful leaves I think I'm gonna keep her that way okay guys philodendron billetier so the last time y'all saw her I put her on this small moss pole um, she has a new leaf. She got stuck, but I freed it. So there's a little bit of breakage. So I'm just gonna put a sachet of pop popper at the top. Yeah, guys, I'm really excited for this billetier to get big again. And I know she's like a good size, but y'all remember what my billetier looked like before. Just watering the moss pole through. And just watching the indicator here uh, to make sure I'm not overdoing it. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna put some press and seal just so the moisture stays around the new adventitious roots. And then I could probably take it off after. Super cute, guys. Okay, there are some Thai constellations in an area mix that do need to be watered. So number one, she is a beauty. Remember when I said that the Ziploc method keeps it moisture. I like didn't water it for like a long time. And feeling the moss. Do you know what? Down here it's actually okay, but up here is crispy. Um, let's water her. I'm also gonna put a uh, beneficial nematode as well. And I'm just covering the sachet with moss to keep it moist. I don't see a new root in the Ziploc, so I'm just gonna water over it. Okay, Pi Constellation number two has two leaves here. Um, so I'm just gonna put her in the sink as well. And I can fit a third one. Okay, number three, right over here. Beautiful leaf. She's dry, I'm just poking my finger in. And she's not like terribly dry. But anyhow, I'm just putting it in the sink. Okay, sachet, sphagnum moss. Okay, I thought the camera was pointed towards the... Um, <laughs> sink but <laughs> these piles of sphagnum moss i have the uh beneficial nematodes right under they're supposed to stay when you're supposed to water so yeah i'm just watering them okay guys i guess that's it Whew. I want this one to be longer, but I'm so hungry. So I'm gonna eat. The next video will probably be another plant video. I've been a little stressed lately just because I'm running out of room for all these plants. And I don't know if you noticed, but in my favorites video, I was bringing plants from the living room, even though I don't have plants living in my living room. And it's because in order to film in my room, I have to move like a third of the plants off the floor. And so just because I'm propagating to sell, 
eventually. Um, I need to build another shelving unit and I don't know how I'm gonna do it guys. So I'm gonna have to downsize a little bit more. And so I'm just kind of preparing for that, doing all the plant tours before I have to do like the big switch or build or whatever organization is, is i've got a lot of questions in my dms i'm so sorry for not responding i'm okay i want to just disconnect a little bit i didn't want to film i didn't want to do anything plant related um so yeah i've just been watching star trek i watched the entire series of star trek enterprise gets a bad rap season three is amazing and i started star trek discovery I'm kind of going in order through the timeline, so Enterprise, Discovery, then Strange New World. Anyhow, in a way I just kind of forced myself to do nothing just because December was chaotic, y'all know, in the best way possible. You know, I didn't want to burn out, so, but yeah, this past week I've been doing absolutely nothing and it's been great. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! <laughs>